Come Santa Claus, here. come Santa Claus, here. come Santa Claus. By the time this is being released, it'll be Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas. I'll probably be sat there eating some pigs in blankets at my nanans every nice time on Christmas Day. But I thought I'd just pre record a podcast to release because I keep wanting to move on to the next thing. I've done a short documentary, now I'm doing a podcast. I just want to keep moving on to the next thing. Christmas, as cringy as it sounds, it is best time of year. You're at school, you print DVDs on all Christmas films or whatever. They're putting all the songs on, everybody's just in a happy mood. Even Ed Teacher, who's got a face like a smacked ass, is happy. Everybody's just so merry and it's, it's just honestly like the best time of year. There's always a load of good films coming out. Even if they're in, you can just stick Home Alone 1 or 2 on. Like, say, they, they are the best Christmas films, aren't they? Or, or a Grinch film. Just all like that. It's just best time of year. And there's always, like, basically every year there's a, there's a Star Wars film, isn't there? I mean, back in 2017, like 2017 Christmas time, uh, Last Jedi came out. And me and my mate, I can just remember, we, for ages, for like a month before, we were getting so hyped up about it. Like, we were so excited to see it. I can remember I booked seats in advance, like a week before we went. And oh, we were so excited. Like, we sat next to each other in basically every lesson, just constantly talking about it. And like, oh, is it going to be good if it, if it's not what we're going to do? But we, we never really thought, really, what if it is actually proper, proper bad. We were just like, oh, it's going to be so good. Trailers, like, trailers just got you so excited. It was such a well put together trailer that you could just think, like, how is this going to be bad? How is it going to be bad at all? We thought, oh, Snoke's going to get a backstory. Snoke, we're just going to know everything about him. He might be a big villain in this uh, in this episode, or it could be next to Kylo Ren. He's just going to be a ruthless killing machine. And then we thought, Ray, right, so last film, she's done all this stuff without any training at all, so she must be linked to Skywalker or Kenobi or something. So we've had, we've had all these expectations going in. So on day, we're like, oh, yeah, see you later, mate, see you later. Uh, I got on bus about half an hour before it was due to come on at the cinema. And guess what? There were traffic, weren't there? Of course there were. So I'm on bus. I'm thinking, oh, for God's sake, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And then I get there five minutes before it starts. Literally run out at bus shelter. Run, run out at bus station, I mean. Sprint it across road straight into the cinema. My mate's stood there. I get to whip tickets out, give them to the man, and we go in. And we are so excited, literally. There's always half an hour of trailers before though, isn't there? You've literally, you've always got to wait for them to finish. We're constantly talking, thinking, oh my God, can't wait, can't wait. So film's about to start. It says all this stuff like, oh yeah, Piggy 12 and all that. And then it goes, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. And we look and we're like, we're waiting for uh, Star Wars logo to pop up. And then this man who works at cinema just walks in front of us with an hot dog and just goes like, Oh, is this your rock dog, mate? And then Star Wars thing comes and goes, do, 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 do. And then we go, now, it's not now. Move. And then we're like, oh, for God's sake. What we, what's he doing? He's just ruined it. He's just ruined the opening part. But we weren't bothered. It didn't really do out really. It was quite funny, to be honest. So film comes on, it starts. All text rolls away. It's, oh, it's above this planet. It always starts above a planet, doesn't it? So there's a planet, and then there's this massive... First order ship just comes into picture, and me and my mate, oh my god, we looked at each other and we were so hyped up. It literally looked so, it looked so mint. Like we thought this film is going to be the best film of the year. But then it kept going on. For the first forty minutes, it were a bit like, yeah, yeah, it's not really, it's not really getting anywhere. But we've got all this at end. We've got Luke. He can have a massive battle at the end with snow or something. We've got Kylo Ren and Rey to have a massive fate against each other. We'll be able to find out who Rey's parents are, really, because that always happens in middle film. And basically, just none of that happened. Rey's mum and dad, they're just they're not even important. We thought it was going to be Skywalker or Kenobi. Literally, not even important at all. Snoke dies halfway through the film to Kylo Ren. Like, what? Like, we don't even get a backstory or whatever. I mean, like, Palpatine did really, but we got prequels, so we should really get a backstory to Snoke. Luke, 
just dies from exhaustion. Like that is worst way. I swear Ryan Johnson just wanted to annoy everyone, but that lit that is literally the worst way to kill off a main character, like ever. I think. He literally, literally, all he did he did a force prediction, yeah, and literally, he just dodged a couple of Kylo Ren's lightsaber swings, annoyed him, took Mick out of him, but then disappeared and beed. What's all that about? Like we, and then. Oh. Like, it's so frustrating to talk about it, but Ryan Johnson, mate, what are you doing? You don't know how to write a Star Wars film. You don't know how to do it, really. He wrote this film called Looper. If you haven't watched it, like, I recommend it a lot. It's a great film. I watched all that film, it was so good. At the end, it says, created by Ryan, jo Ryan Johnson. I just thought, what? Has this man gone from Looper, which were released before Last Jedi, to killing off Luke Skywalker because he's too tired? What is all that about? Like, it just makes no sense to me. And me and my mate, like, we were both so disappointed. We came out of cinema, went to the bus, uh, bus station to get some food. And we, we both, because we've been so hyped up about it all this time, we both just didn't want to admit that it were a bad film. So we both said, oh, yeah, yeah, it was a good film, it was a good film. Yeah, and the only thing we said was, oh, I wish Luke had done something a bit more. But honestly, when I came out of that cinema, I didn't feel happy, I didn't feel sad, I didn't feel excited for the next film. I just I just felt stale. I just didn't even feel out. I just felt like disappointed as out. And I was tr sort of trying to convince myself, no, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking it's a bad film and it's not really. I could do it watching it again. And I ain't watched it since because that's how bad of a film it is. Literally, I can't describe how disappointed I was. But it didn't really ruin Christmas at all for me, making it as if it was, if it, as if it ruined everything. But yeah, I'm not really, like, I can remember going to watch Force Awakens in 2015 with, with another mate, and I actually thought it were a good film, to be honest. Like, everybody says that it's a copy of uh, New Hope, but I just, I wasn't really too bothered. Obviously, they've got to, like, obviously, Disney. They were too scared to just try something completely new like they did with Last Jedi. Um, so they sort of copied like the whole idea of A New Hope. But imagine if they'd have done something new with Force Awakens and made it out like Last Jedi. Imagine. Literally, first film to start a new saga and then Luke Skywalker dies. But yeah, anyway, I thought Force Awakens were a good film because it's sort of like... It, it wasn't bad, you know what I mean? They couldn't make it bad because it was based off A New Hope. It were a good film. We had some good characters. Only thing I didn't really like was that Ray never really had any training or out, and she couldn't fight Kylo Ren and win him. Do you know what I mean? In a lightsaber battle, that was my only like little little nitpick, um, and sort of like the whole thing with Starkiller Base and all how it was basically exactly the same as Death Star. That were about it really. I thought it was a good film. I thought, oh yeah, Ray, I'm excited for next time. We're gonna find out who Ray's parents are. We have a massive battle end with Luke, and just none of that happened. So now this year, 2019, Rise of Skywalker's coming out. And I don't think, like, I actually couldn't care less, really. I'm still going to go and see it on December 19th, like, but I honestly couldn't care less. But yeah, like I said, it's been pre-recorded this. I might just do a review on it, to be honest. I might do a review on it and put it in this podcast after this. I might do that, actually. But yeah, anyway, Rise of Skywalker's coming out. The event to do something to, like, get old fans back. So they brought Lando back. And they brought Palpatine back. It's just like a last ditch attempt to to bring someone back to get money in. Because they know that their characters literally I couldn't care less about Poe, Finn, Ray. Only one I really care about is Kyle Ren, that's because he's main baddie. Like I could not care less. So they've got to bring in old characters to support the new ones. And they've even gone that far that they've brought Leia back, who's unfortunately died in real life, Carrie Fisher. They brought her back through CGI. It's just I don't know how they can do it. Like, they, they didn't even plan it out either. Lord of Rings, obviously, three films in that trilogy. We're not even going to talk about all of it, right? Three films in that trilogy. Before they even started filming or even thought about making films, they planned it out. They made they planned the first film out. They planned the second film out. They planned the third film out because they need to have all these story acts and all these character acts for all these characters because, obviously, that's just how you make a trilogy. But with Star Wars, they literally said, right, J.J. Abrams, you'll make Force Awakens, and then make Glass Jedi, and then make the next one. 
but they give it to J.J. Abrams for the first film, and then they said, oh yeah, we'll get Ryan Johnson in, just to do whatever he wants, and then we'll get you back, because of how bad he's done. But literally, they should have pa- literally planned it out before they even began to film, but they just didn't. Like, and I'm just happy that they're just losing money, to be honest, because they've just ruined Star Wars. They actually have. Everybody says it, that they have, it's true. When the next Star Wars film comes out that's not Skywalker Saga, I could not care less at all. I've said that a lot this video, but I couldn't care. What are they going to do to get the old fans back? Nothing. They can't do all. Only good thing is Mandalorian and uh, Clone Wars is returning on Disney+. Plus. That's about it. But guess what? It's got old characters in. Mandalorian, Boba Fett, Jango Fett. Yeah, we've got them to in. Do you know what I mean? Clone Wars, it's, Clone Wars, it's, it's an old series that ca- got cancelled by Disney. But because they're losing that much money, they thought, all right, we need to bring this back to get money back in. It's just it's just a massive mess. Um, I know it's Christmas, I'm complaining, but, you know, it's a podcast, isn't it? I've got to talk for a bit. And yeah, like, James Bond trailer's just been released today. It's December... Is it December 3rd today, I think, I'm recording this? I actually, I don't know. Uh, no Time to Die trailer has just been released. It actually looks all right. Uh, I've just watched it on way home, so I'll probably watch it again. Because um, the man who played Freddie Mercury, isn't he? I think it's Raimi Malik or something, you say it like that. But he's the main villain, and he looks quite good. Daniel Craig, I grew up with him as James Bond. I think he's the best James Bond. Um... I've never really watched any others, but I still think it's great. Skyfall, that's literally one of the best films I have watched in my life. It's such a good film. I don't know why people compl- can complain about that film. Spectre came out then after in 2015. It, it wants as good. It wasn't what I was expecting. It's a bit like Last Jedi, really, but it, it wasn't as bad as that. It was a good film, but it just was missing stuff that Skyfall, you know, had good in it. So this no, new No Time to Die James Bond, they're going to obviously want to go back to roots. They're going to want to have a Skyfall sort of uh, film. And I think it's going to be good, Miss N. Good, good villain. Obviously, good James Bond. He's brilliant, Daniel Craig. When he eventually leaves, he said he wasn't even going to do this film. But when he eventually leaves, like I'm going to be upset because he's, he's a good James Bond. Yeah, well, hopefully it is good as it comes out on April 5th, I think, 2020. Um, and actually, that's just reminded me. When are we getting Indiana Jones 5? Because I can remember saying about three years ago, oh yeah, next Indiana Jones is going to be coming out like three months after I leave school. And that's next year. But it's, it's not out yet, do you know what I mean? Like, they said 2019 at first, so it would have been out already. But then they said 2020, but now it's been pushed back to 2021. And Harrison Ford, like, he's nearly knocking on 80. So what is he going to do? main reason the last film failed was because of how much CGI they put into it. Like, Indiana Jones and Kingdom of Crystal Skull. There was so much CG, like, CGI with monkeys jumping about everywhere. Like, that's what ruined it, really. And it wasn't really a good story. But, well, that's what people say anyway. I... I I honestly didn't really think it was too bad, but that's because I grew up with it. Um, so this one, I don't know what they're going to do with it. He's basically done everything in the end. Like, they should have left it at Last Crusade, honestly. Uh, I've said that with Star Wars and all, they should have left it at uh, uh, Return of Jedi, but, you know, it's all for money, isn't it? So hopefully, they'll make up for it this time, and then just leave it there. So Indiana Jones 5 would be a great film, but leave it there. They won't touch Indiana Jones again. And after this, hopefully they won't touch Star Wars again either. I mean, they've just made a new Terminator film, haven't they? Terminator Dark Fate. Like, honestly, Terminator is one of my favourite franchises, if you want to call it that, even though I only class first two as actual proper films. Terminator 1, great film, obviously. Like, it's got 100% of Rotten Tomatoes. Terminator 2, um, one of the best films I've watched, just like Skyfall. It's up there in the list. Literally one of the best films I've watched. Like, it's just such a good film with John Connor and that. So Terminator 3, Rise of Machines. I didn't think it was as great because they got rid of the whole, like, no favour, what we make for ourselves sort of thing. 
Terminator 4, when it came out, I wasn't really too fond of it, but now I've rewatched it, it's actually not as bad as you think, really. We, um, Batman as John Connor, I forgot his name, Christian Bale, that's it. He wasn't even that bad as John Connor. I thought it would, if they'd carried it on, like, we wouldn't even had Genesis or out. I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm just going to say one thing, rubbish. Right, so then they thought, oh, yeah, right, right. What we'll do is, we'll get Tim Miller in to direct it, and then we'll get James Cameron to do, like, one thing, look at script, and then we'll put his name in the credits for this Terminator Dark Fate film, and that'll just sell everybody to buy this film. Well, it sold me to buy it. I thought it was going to be like Terminator 1 and 2, but it wasn't. It was just CGI all the time. To be fair, it wasn't too bad, but... Like, the new John Connor, I forgot her name, that's how I don't forget to who she is. Only person I know is Grace and Linda Hamilton, Sarah Connor. But that new John Connor that they've got, literally, it's so unbelievable. It's like Amelia Clark in, in Genesis, just so unbelievable, so miscast. And the film's flopped and all. It was released in, like, uh, it was released in UK first on 25th of October, I think. So everybody gave it a bad review, and then everybody in America didn't want to watch it. So they've just lost out on so much money, then they're just they're not going to carry it on. So I suppose it's a good thing, but it's just still disappointing that they can't make. Literally, with all the stuff they've got now, all technology and all that, they can't make a good film, a good Terminator film. Like if I were them, I would have made it about. So the T eight hundred Arnold, yeah, I would have made it so he didn't kill John Connor. I'd have made it that so that he just got sent back in time, got stuck in the wrong time period or something, and had to live as a human or something, tried to live as a human. And do you know what I mean? That would just be a good film. We don't need all this stuff where, oh, there's, a, there's someone sent back to save someone and then the Terminator's sent back, and that person who's sent back to save them does actually save the main character, and then bad guy dies. Guys, I'm chuffing out, can't speak. The bad guy dies, and then next film happens and then something else like I, I could care less about next film it's just it's i should just rename this podcast just disappointing films that makes you not excited for next them but yeah it, it wasn't that good really i'll probably get get like a six out of ten i think it was on the same level as terminator 3 to be honest so they hadn't done the job ever they were supposed to make a better sequel to terminator 2 but they hadn't done so you know James Cameron, he just wants to focus on Avatar now, don't he? He just wants to forget about everything else. I've just got back from watching Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. And what the hell was that? It's just, I don't, I don't get it, Liam. Like, to be fair, this film would have been ten times better if Last Jedi were a good film. Like, it's just true. If Last Jedi were a good film and it and it followed up on everything from Force Awakens, I would have been excited for this film because I would have had hope in it. But when it, even when I was sat in cinema and a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away comes on and Star Wars pops up, I I didn't feel hope. I just I, I didn't really care to be honest. I I was just a bit like I should have been right. I'm gonna enjoy it next two hour and a half of me in my life, but I was just a bit like oh you better get it right this time. Because of what happened with Last Jedi. He wasn't satisfactory. I'm trying to find a better word. But. He won't, yeah, he wasn't satisfying at all. Like, I expected so much more. J.J. Abrams is, is just a liar. Like, just he's just he's just trying to sell a product, basically. He's just a businessman. He's just trying to sell people to try and come and watch this film to buy a ticket. And it's worked. It looks like it's worked. He said that. There'll be lots of prequel stuff in. He said there's a lot. There'll be lots of um, main trilogy stuff in original trilogy, but there won't. I don't know where any of prequel stuff was except from spoilers. When Anakin said a couple of words and Obi Wan and Yoda and that, but they only said some words. Like it, it's really not good enough. If I'm being honest, it's just not good enough at all. They said a few words and were not really from original trilogy except from. The really like this is I think this is the best part of the film by the way and it's it's a, like what a ten second scene, of where Leia young Leia and young uh, Luke Skywalker are sort of like training with lightsabers and they've de-aged them, like what best part of the film, and, and like that's from the original trilogy basically and it's ten seconds long so it just shows how 
how bad this film is if a 10 second clip is the only good part of it. Just shows. Palpatine's back, does fuck all, basically. Literally does note. It, it, it does some force like it, right? So he gets all these powers from Ray and Kylo Ren. He basically gets all their force powers, puts them into his sen. He sort of like, because his face has been destroyed and all that, and all his hands sort of like regenerates him, comes back to life. He's all powerful and all this. He does a bit of force lightning at Ray on a lightsaber. She pulls out another lightsaber, deflects it back, and it kills him. How boring. How boring is that? Yoda couldn't even destroy him when he were holding it in his hands, throwing it back at him. So how's Rey doing it with just two lightsabers? Like, and when she says, I am all the Jedi, it just, it just reminded me of I am Iron Man from Endgame. Like, it's seeing people and all, and it's just Disney. Like, they literally wrote... They don't even care if it's a good film or not. They've got their money now. They've got the paycheck. They couldn't care less. Like, Hollywood's just... It's so toxic right now. They're making a new Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 3, because there's got no original ideas. Who knows, it might be a good film. Might be. There's like, what, a 1% chance of it being a good film, and that's it. Anyway, back to Rise of Skywalker. Obviously, J.J. been trying to fix what happened in Last Jedi, really. Sort of like, with Ray's parents. It turns out there sort of are nobody. But the Palpatine's sons? Son? Is it? I don't know. I actually, I don't really know, to be honest. It's just a bit confusing. Ray is Palpatine's granddaughter, yeah. And I'll get back to that in a minute. When it were revealed, like, I didn't really care. Because of The Last Jedi. I know I keep going back to Last Jedi, but it is Last Jedi's fault, the film. Um, I, I don't really care less. I was just a bit, like, you know, a bit disappointed, isn't it? Like, we should have really found this out in the last film, or something like that. Or lead on. But, like, there'd be so, there's so many theories saying that she was Palpatine's granddaughter already. Like, it was just a bit... I didn't really care. And Star Wars Fury, who made the uh, fan film, like, I thought Palpatine just looked exactly like that. And I know it's Palpatine, it's supposed to look like like that, do you know what I mean? But we, I thought that were better, if you know what I mean. The fan film were better than Rise of Skywalker at portraying Palpatine, basically. Because Palpatine in Rise of Skywalker, you couldn't even see his face at the time. It would just a lightning bolt flash, then you saw his face for like one second. But he didn't really do all else. He did a, he did a massive force lightning up into the sky to bring all these ships down, but he can't destroy a lightsaber with logic. Do you know what I mean? If the lightsaber can be destroyed by two people pulling it apart with the force, surely it can be destroy, destroyed with the most powerful force lightning. It's just, it don't really make no sense. He didn't really do all Palpatine. Best thing he did where he said, do it, like, do it, again. He said that again, so that's the second time he said it. That was the best part. That was the best part at role. Like, I really can't, I'm trying to think. There's no else that he really did. He just, we, we found out that Snoke were a clone in, like, a fi another five-second clip, like, a five-second summary, basically. It's, it's poor. It really is poor. I keep saying it, but it's true. Finn? Never, he, he, did, he did a couple of stuff, wasn't really over the top, he didn't really do much. Again, no, not really any character development because they didn't plan it out before they wrote the three films. There's, there's no there. Uh, Poe got a bit, a bit of character development because he sort of got like a love interest in this film that we never really found out about before. So it's sort of summer there, isn't it, do you know what I mean? Ray, obviously J.J. Abrams were just trying to show why... She's got this all this force power and all that with her training. But we knew she was just going to beat Kylo Ren anyway because she's done it two times already. And Kylo Ren turns to good. He like, turns good, which is good. Like I liked, I did like that because I wanted him to anyway. He, he just gets defeated by a lightsaber. And then Rey sort of like heals his lightsaber wound. So can, can that happen to anybody then? So when someone gets their arm chopped off, can someone just go up to them and heal it? Like, could Luke have had his arm grown back if someone knew the, that sort of, like, powers of the Force? Could that have happened? Don't know. Like, you know, it's the last episode in the Skywalker 
like saga like we never know Lu uh, Ray at the end of the film goes to Tatooine she buries the two lightsabers which is Leia's and Luke's she buries them in sand and then she pulls out this lightsaber that's sort of like orange-ish sort of like a mix of two colours don't know why like no idea why never gets explained never will do she looks into the sunset I think and then that's it that's the end of the film I don't even think it's real, I think it's just BB-8, I think, like, it's as if it's made character all along. I expected more, I expected so much more. If, like, it had ended with every single, like, Force Ghost, like Qui-Gon Jinn, Anakin Skywalker, Yoda, Mace Windu, like, Ben Skywalker, like, Han Solo, if you sort of, like, count him, Leia, all them, if it had all them and Rey looking into Tatooine two sons to end the film, I think, like, I would have liked this film. 10 times more because I, I was expect all the way through I was expecting something like that because JJ even said oh yeah it's going to be pre some stuff from prequels going to be in so all this time I was expecting like some force ghosts to pop up but we only got the voices so I was a bit disappointed so we're like right at the end we, we are going to see them all come on we, we've got to see them all it's just Ray looking off into sunset she um it's uh she, someone asked her what her name is she goes Ray and then she looks over to sort of like right or left and then Leia and Luke stood there and then she goes oh yeah my name's Ray Skywalker you're not a Skywalker love you're just not you're really not I can't believe they've even made these three films I should have never done it I don't know if I said this before I'm, I'm filming this after I've watched like Rise of Skywalker like I filmed previous part of this podcast ages ago so I can't remember what I've said but they should have never even made this trilogy. Films 1, 2 uh, through to 6 were all about Anakin's turn to the dark side and then he redeems his sin, he brings balance to the force and that should be the end of it. That is the prophecy. The prophecy is that Anakin should have brought balance to the force. Not Rey, because in the end she eventually does, doesn't she? She kills Palpatine. So she's one that brings balance to the force. Not Anakin, but the prophecy said that Anakin would do it. Now, if Prophecy said that a Skywalker would do it, then sort of fair enough. Because she calls herself a Skywalker at the end, doesn't she? But they should have never made these three new films. And even if they did, they should have planned them out before. They should have made sure they were right. Luke comes on for a bit. Another good part of the film. Only good part of the film, I mean, like. He lifts up his sort of like X-Wing, I think it's called, from uh, C, a bit like Master Yoda did in episode 5. And then so that Ray can fly it, I thought that were good. I like that, you know, a bit of fan service. Hooks, General Hooks, if you remember him, turned into a comedian in the last film for some reason. He turns good in this film, out at Blue. He's a spy for uh, the Resistance, so he feeds him information from First Order, then he dies. And then at the end, I know I'm not really going in chron chronological order here, but I'm just trying to think of stuff that I can remember, you know, it wasn't really an interesting film like. Uh, so at the end we've got all these massive final order ships or first order I'd be able to call them all these ships there must be in like thousands and thousands then we've got loads of resistance ships and that you know all these people from resistance and we, we don't even see any of them like if if it had zoomed in on some of the cockpits and shown like a soaker or some of like that would have been so good that would have been again it would have meant film ten times better Ahsoka in one of its ships, Ahsoka Tano, that would have been amazing. But we've got Lando, obviously, yeah, I'm happy about Lando coming back, but they just had to do it, didn't they? Like, he's the only one left, basically, basically, except from Chewie. Like, that's it, they're only old people. Leia, obviously, sadly, she died in real life, like I said before. So, she had to die in this film, like, unfortunately. And then, that sort of made Ben turn to the light. There's no one really left, you know from the original trilogy, except from Chewie. And then C-3PO, I guess you can say an R2-D2. C-3PO gets his memory wiped uh, so that they can read this sort of like Sith sword or something like that, I don't know. Um, and then he gets his memory back from R2 and that's it. It's just like, if you're gonna do something, stick to it. They just, they say like, oh no, we've gotta wipe your memory. Oh no, the wipe the wipe his memory. Then it's like, oh no, it's right. We can just fix it like that. Just fix it. Like we never get 
an explanation as to how. I don't think anyway. I, I did go to the toilet because I needed a, a was. But we never really get an explanation as to why Ray had Luke Skywalker's um, lightsaber fixed because it was broken last film, wasn't it? So how was it fixed? But like she stuck some sticky tape on it or something, put some cellar tape around it, fixed it back together. But there's no explanation at all. You know, fair play to J.J. Abrams. He's done. He's done at least something with it, with the film. But he should have done all three films, and then would have would have at least had a good sort of ish storyline. Last, uh, like I said before, Force Awakens. I thought it were an alright film. Good stepping stones for next films. Then Ryan Johnson comes in, absolutely shits all over it. Then we've got this film trying to fix it, basically. Obviously, Last Jedi messed everything up, didn't it? So this film is trying to fix it all, whilst trying to be a satisfying conclusion, whilst trying to give fan service, and just trying to do all this stuff together, which obviously it cannot. There were no big lightsaber battle. They had it in the beginning, Kylo and Rey, but it wasn't really choreographed well, or out. He wasn't a good fight at all. It should have been. It should have been a massive fight. Lightsabers out and everything. I wish Palpatine did the fate at end at least. At least have Palpatine say something like, It's treason then, and just fate Ray. Like, at least have that for God's sake. There were no duel at fates or out like the Warwick trailer, which I'll get hyped up about. There were none of that. Just Ray's theme played over the top, and then a bit of Kylo Ren's, and then a bit of Star Wars theme, then a bit of Poe's theme, and then a bit of Finn's theme. They were not creative, it's just all the old stuff put back in. I think they were a tiny bit of prequel, like, so like, music put in, I think. But that's about it, basically. It wants a good film, that's all I can say. I could, I'm trying to remember stuff from film, like, like I say, it's not really rememberable. Um, Stormtrooper stuck at him. <laughs> they go on, they sneak on First Order ship. And then they go through them all, all stormtroopers, they kill all stormtroopers and escape somehow. So they still can't aim. I mean, Poe gets shot in the arm, I think. But nothing else happens. Literally, there's no consequence of him being shot. He gets shot, he, he acts hurt for a little bit. Then they get surrounded by stormtroopers and he says something like, Hey fellas, or something, just for a bit of comic relief. Comic relief, like when he's just been shot in arm. By a stormtrooper blaster. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? But in episode four, stormtroopers go and kill Sky Luke Skywalker's like auntie and that and uncle, and then they literally turn into skeletons. Or is that because they're being burned? I don't know. But if he's being shot at arm by a stormtrooper blaster and he's he's not hurt, in fact, rest of the film is not even mentioned. Then what? They're literally not even powerful weapons, but but they're sort of like laser guns, aren't they? So are they powerful or not? If a Stormtrooper gets hit by one of them, I swear to God, in past few films, when a Stormtrooper gets hit by one of them, like, bullets, or laser bullets, or whatever you want to call them, Stormtrooper gun, they literally go flying, and, and the, the chest, like, armour just gets broke. Do you know what I mean? It leaves a massive mark on it. But in this film, you get shot at arm, but no happens. So much disappointment. So many fans. Like, I don't think I saw one person smiling when I walked out of that cinema. Like, not even one. I f even if they were smiling, they were probably just laughing at how bad film was. Including me. Just laughing at how bad it was. Only good part was when Eatwalks came back. That's it. Yeah, they came back. For a bit. Because they had to show all planets and that. If they show the old Ewoks, at least show Anakin as a force ghost. Even if you ain't got him... To come back as the actual actor, use some old stock footage like he did with Leia. If you can make Leia come back, who, like I said before, unfortunately died in real life. If you can make her come back somehow from using stock footage, how can you not make Obi-Wan, Anakin, Yoda, Qui-Gon Jinn, etc, Mace Windu, etc. How can you not make all them come back somehow in this film at the end? How? Surely. I've seen so many edits online, like, where people just bring back loads of force codes to old people. Edit a scene with them all in and that. On a positive note, this film, in my opinion, is better than Last Jedi. It's not better than Force Awakens, and most people hate Force Awakens. So it's sort of like, it's not, it's not shit, but it's very close to shit. Do you know, do you know when you're standing shit, and it's on the bottom of your shoe? It's sort of that sort of shit, it's not fresh shit, do you know what I mean? You know, I might as well just rank all the Star Wars films. 
Number one, the best Star Wars film in my opinion. Debatable, but this is my opinion right now, off the top of my head. I'm not even putting any research in. It's either between Revenge of Sith, Just Cause It Lights, Even Battle at End, or Empire Strikes Back. I think I'm just going to put Empire Strikes Back at first, then Revenge of Sith, then, um, let me think, probably Return of Jedi in, second, in third place, I mean. Uh, then A New Hope, then Force Awakens, then Phantom Menace, then Attack of Clones, then Rise of Skywalker, and then Chuffing Last Jedi. <laughs> Two out of three of the new trilogy of films is the worst of my rank. That just tells you something about Disney, doesn't it? Just tells you something about the whole world, really. It's just all about money, isn't it? If I were to get a rating out of 10, uh, Rise of Skywalker... Well, actually, I'll do Last Jedi first. Last Jedi gets a 1 out of 10 for me. Right? And Rise of Skywalker... I'd say... 2 out of 10. And that's being decent. That's being generous. It really is. J.J. Abrams, mate. You said it was going to be good. You said it was going to be a good film, but... At the end of the day, they're just trying to sell a product, aren't they? That's all it is to them. Just a product. So, yeah. Merry Christmas. F*** off. J.J. Abrams, you big fucking knobhead. You're a new one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a... You're a